This is a quick video to show some of the tool settings in Revy Paint. So here's our standard oil and uh, let's just run through some of the interesting things you can do. So the first thing that I like to point out that's a little bit weird or different is that there's a color jitter slider which gives you this kind of a rainbow effect. And if you notice when we drag a longer stroke, it sort of goes towards the chosen color, which in this case is this orange. But let's say I go here. So towards the end of the stroke, it becomes more and more blue, right? And um, you can make it more subtle. But in order to control that, we can click on the oil again. And then there's all these settings in here, and um, this one is the mix setting. So if I go to, let's say, zero, then it's not going to do any of that fading. It's just going to stay noisy. And then if I go all the way to 100 on mix, it does that blending or mixing, I guess. Um, there's a whole bunch of other things here. We, we can change the texture to be... You know, maybe one of this this more airy texture, or a circle, which is kind of distorted, so you don't really see the circle. But if I were to turn off distortion to zero and put the size to, oops, to like twenty-five, I guess. You can kind of see some of the circle at the ends. Um, all right, let me go back to this texture. So, uh, distort text controls the noise. So we can see it's changing the pattern of the noise when we move these around. You can make it finer by cranking these the noise width and the noise height up. And uh, you can get a lot of different effects with it. And you can go really low to make it more watery looking, I guess. And the distort amount or distort text will only take effect if you have a texture like one of these with the alpha on it. So you can see that it's, this texture is a bunch of lines like a rake or a comb, but it's all distorted in, in this case. But we can turn the distort text down and then it's just gonna be back to a line. So that's the thing with, with the uh, tool engine. You, you can get a lot of different stuff out of just a few simple textures here. Okay, distort color controls how much of that uh, noisy color comes through. Text saturation is only if the texture has saturation. These this one and this one have slight, slight color saturation, but you don't really notice it so much. I might just, I don't know, this this might need to only, well, this only matters if you have a, te a texture with color in it, which in the future you might be able to in import textures, but right now it's kind of pointless. So I should probably get rid of this setting. <laughs> um, color jitter point is another noise type. So you can see it here, it's like this kind of a noise. Each point gets its own uh, random color. The other thing that's happening here is we have a little bit of blur, which gives it that watery look. You can turn that off. 
And then this is more like a classic uh, heavy paint tool. But yeah, this blur. What it does is it, it puts down a stroke first and then it blurs it a little bit. So you get like a two stage effect. Um, you can also smudge it a little bit. Smudge makes it so that when you drag the thing, it, 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 uh, actually, I'm not sure if I'm explaining it correctly. <laughs> Never mind. I don't really need, <laughs> I forget what smudge does, but I'll, I'll make another video later, but it, it, you can use it in combination with blur and actually it, it makes more sense on the smudge tool itself where it controls how much c the color is displaced so let's say if we have red and uh, yellow and a blue and we put the smudge on the smudge amount controls how much it is displaced like that how much it moves basically and then blur just like distorts it so that it becomes softer um so yeah there's a lot of distortion going on there's also let's, let's go back to fan for a second and go into pressure so when you click on pressure there's all these sliders here like for example lightness Let's see what happens when we use lightness. So here, the pressure actually determines how bright the color is. And this kind of gives you an interesting effect with oil. Let me reset this. I'm just going to reload the page here so I get my default settings. But if we turn up the lightness here, you can see that the pressure affects the lightness and I feel like it gives it a nice little like subtle 3d look um, maybe if we turn this down a little bit more so sort of a slight catching of the light when you lift off on the on the stroke and then there's also size obviously um, which, you know, pressure controls the size. You can control opacity here with pressure. And they're all on sliders, so you can, you know, mix and match and, and modify it. Um, distortion, this, this means that the pressure actually controls the distortion. So if we go back to a more textured tool, it should be changing the distortion as we change pressure which you can't really see how much pressure I'm putting but you just gotta take my word for it 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 messes with the texture a little bit um, and then what else we have rotation this is just like heavy paint where you know follow first means that it just goes around the first point of the of the curve like this so it just like kind of points towards the middle of the stroke and then um, follow kind of just ignores the pen and it, it just it just follows itself and then pen will take the pen tilt and the barrel rotation into consideration and then okay so what else do we have? Scratchy is kind of like this. Gives you a bit of a... Like it's picking up a little bit of paint from the canvas. Um, auto eye drop is neat. It gives you... It's sort of like the mix tool from heavy paint or mix mode where you can say, let's say we, we want to auto eye drop the start of the stroke so if I start my stroke over here over the orange it picks that color for the start of the stroke and then it ends it wherever 
Oh yeah, I'm over here. Let me change this. So, yeah, it picks the start color of the stroke. And then it ends with the chosen color up here, being the chosen color. Uh, there's different modes to it, so we can say, you know, I want it to only pick the end color. So in that case, it's going to use my chosen color for the start, and then it's going to pick what's on the canvas for the end color. And then it's pretty self-explanatory for these other modes. Um, but one other neat mode here is uh, stroke mode, which basically picks and applies it to the start and the end. So this one is the most like an auto eyedropper, I guess. Okay, and then uh, what else we have? Sub D just controls the smoothness of the stroke. Um, it's kind of hard to see here on this, this type of stroke, but let me switch to a different tool like, for example, um, let's just try fried fluff. So here you can see, you know, it's a stamp type tool, so we can see each individual stamp, but if I drag this fried fluff up here and go into the settings again, sub D, and let me change it to two, now it's tighter spacing, it's twice as many stamps, and then this is multiplying that again by two so it's what is that four times as many stamps yeah and uh, let me turn blur down yeah so blur is kind of the new thing for webby paint that heavy paint doesn't really have and it just makes things look kind of crazy and it, uh, it also goes off of, based off the noise size. I wonder if we play with this. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of crazy stuff going on with the uh, blur. Pretty fun to play with. Um, random text offset. That's more for like um, that was originally made for the lasso tool. Lasso text because it would look pretty repetitive if the texture didn't change position or I mean its start position. So this kind of jitters that around so that the texture is not like repeating itself too obviously. Um, we have regular blur. Again, all these tools use the same settings, so you know we can change the blur, noise, height, and width, and it should, you know, respond. So when it's really low noise, then it looks more like water. Which is kind of how, um, oh, this one's cool. But that's how, uh, Blur Ice was made. It's just a very low size on the noise width and height. And then, uh, there's more settings that I'm probably forgetting, but this is just the basics of, of the tool settings. Um, I would say just, you know, play with it. There's, I mean, I honestly don't even know what's going to happen most of the time, so it's just really about experimenting. And uh, you'll sort of get a feel for what the things do. But a lot of times it's it can be surprising, <laughs> which is, I think, sort of the fun part about it. Um, 
anyway, okay, that's it for now.